This is a trigger warning that this video talks about self-harm and ending one's life. If you're feeling such thoughts, call the number on the screen and in the description below. Welcome back to my inner sanctum. I am your hostess, Countess Elizabeth, mistress of the macabre. Some humans have mental illness or feel completely down in their lives, so they turn to self-harm and sometimes ultimately ending one's life. This video does not promote such things, and if you feel this feeling, please get help as there are people who want to help you. One of the most popular places for people to end their lives is the Golden Gate Bridge. The allure of the bridge is said to be a romantic place where people want to end it all. So let us gaze into the void and take a walk on this famous bridge and explore our grotesque curiosity. Thousands of tourists from all over the planet flock to the Golden Gate Bridge every day, but it is no secret that the bridge's intrigue, mystique, and popularity also attract another element, those looking to end their lives in a romanticized manner by jumping off this famous landmark. As of 2019, an estimated 1,700 people have jumped from the Golden Gate Bridge, with only 25 known survivors. The number of deaths is considerably higher if counting those who jumped at night that went unrecorded. Profiles of jumpers were not kept in the early years of the bridge, but using the information we do have from past jumps, we have an idea of some of the trends and characteristics of the jumpers. The average age of jumpers being 41 years old. Occupations of the jumpers have varied over the years. Professors and students usually lead the list, with jumps by software engineers recently on the rise. About 80% of the jumpers are white. Suicide jumps are obviously random. Sometimes there can be three or four jumps in a week. Other times, several months may go by without a reported jump. One fact, not so random, is that male jumpers far outnumber female jumpers. Three males to each female. But females, unfortunately, do jump as well. If you work at the Golden Gate Bridge long enough, you probably have seen at least one person go over the outer rail, heard a splash from someone hitting the water, or seen a body of an unfortunate jumper floating in the bay. But to witness an entire jump is a rare occurrence. Something like being at the wrong place at the wrong time, says bridge painter Bob McGee. McGee tells of his experience with seeing someone jump. On this particular morning, an unforgettable sight came from above. A call came over our portable ri bridge radio that a distressed man was pacing on the east sidewalk between the South Tower and Midspan. He had been talking with bridge authorities for two hours on his cell phone, contemplating a jump off the bridge, and threatened to jump if anyone approached him. Our current position on the pier enabled us to have a clear view of the east sidewalk's outer rail. The rail stood about 200 feet above us and about 240 feet above the water. Unable to see the man on the sidewalk, Robin, McGee's co-worker, and I returned to the project on the pier, hoping for a resolution to the negotiation standoff above. Then, suddenly, Robin grabbed my arm, diverting my attention to a man with long hair sitting on the outer rail, about 100 yards north of the south tower towards midspan. From my vantage point, he appeared to look calm, perched on the rail with his back to us, casually talking on his cell phone. After watching him for several minutes, I doubted his intention to jump. Having had plenty of time to contemplate his inevitable fate, if he jumped, I figured wrong. I looked away for just a moment and heard Robin yell, Oh no! He's jumping! I immediately looked up to see a man falling feet first with his back to us and had his arms stretched above his head. One second, man falling. The man did not scream as he plummeted to the water but I remember hearing his clothes flapping loudly. Two seconds. Man still falling. His shirt and undershirt began to peel off his body. They were wrapped around over his head, ready to fly off his wrists as he neared the water. Three seconds. Man still falling. Even though the man traveled downward extremely fast, the four seconds it took him to reach the water seemed so much longer. I cannot imagine how long the four seconds must seem to the jumper. Four seconds. Man hits water. The man hit the water, causing a huge splash, followed by the most defining moment of the jump, the sound. Mixed emotions overwhelmed me, at once feeling astonished, humbled, and sad. My misconception that a jump from the sidewalk can be survived ended in an instant. Bridge workers later impressed upon me the rarity of witnessing an entire jump as I had, but I did not feel privileged. This is just one example of something that happens every other day on the bridge. The east sidewalk is the setting for almost every jump. The sidewalk is 10 feet wide concrete walkway that runs along the length of the bridge, taking gradual turns around each tower. A safety barrier constructed in 2002 protects pedestrians from the roadway, separating sidewalk from lane 1 of traffic. About every 100 yards, a metal latch emergency gate has been installed for the bridge patrol and tow service to access the sidewalk from the roadway. The sidewalk's outer steel guardrail is slightly over 4 feet tall and runs the length of the bridge. Beyond the outer rail, 3 feet below the outside edge of the sidewalk is a 3 foot wide steel box cord, which is the only thing between the outer rail and a 240 feet fall to the water below. 
Due to constant fog and moisture in the air, the top of the cord is wet nearly all the time and can be extremely slick. It's very dangerous conditions for anyone who walks on the bridge every day, let alone a nervous person climbing down onto it for the first time. Bob McGee recalls, A victim caught on surveillance video learned a tragic lesson about the dangers of going over the outer rail. It's late evening and a middle-aged man stands alone on the sidewalk near a light pole, not another soul in sight. Fog blanketed the bridge on this dark, drizzly night. The heavy mist gave the sidewalk lighting an eerie, faded glow, just enough to help guide him over the guardrail. Awkwardly, he climbs over the rail and now stands on the cord ready to jump. Suddenly, he appears to have had second thoughts of his decision. He does not want to jump. He is scared and disoriented, but not ready to end his life. He gets up the nerve to climb back over the rail to safety. He reaches for the handrail, but comes up considerably short. Due to the drop from the sidewalk to the cord, the top handrail is now over seven feet above him. The cord glistens with moisture and must be very slick. The man can only reach the bottom of the guardrail, which he now tightly holds onto, searching for a foothold that would allow him to hoist himself back over the rail. His foot slips from the beam. His grip fails him. Falling back down into the wet cord, he slips off the cord and out of sight of the video camera, ultimately gone forever, falling to his death. He learned the hard way how slick and dangerous the outer cord can be and will never get a second chance at life. There are those that do survive the fall from the bridge. One famous example is Kevin Hines. Hines began hearing voices in his head telling him to die. On his walk up the pathway, he wept. Hines contemplated not jumping, reasoning that if any person showed that they cared about him, that he would not jump. A female police officer and bridge worker passed him without stopping. A woman with a German accent did come up to him and asked him to take her picture of, at the bridge, but she did not mention anything about his tears or asked about his well-being. After she left, he took several steps and threw himself over the rail. After leaping, Hines had instant regret. When my hands left the rail and my legs curled over, as soon as I left the bridge, I thought, I don't want to die. He had gone over the railing head first, but when he regretted his decision, turned himself around to land in the water legs first. The impact force was comparable to slamming into a concrete wall. After he'd surfaced, he felt a creature nudging his body, which he initially thought was a shark trying to eat him, so he punched at it. The creature was later identified as a sea lion by witnesses. The sea lion helped Hines float until he was rescued by the Coast Guard. Now Hines who, when he leapt, who had recently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, tells his story to at-risk groups around the nation, urging people to get treatment for mental illness and helping them realize that jumping off a bridge is not the answer. It is now reported that the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District is in the process of constructing a deterrent net system to deter those who want to end their lives at the bridge by placing a physical barrier between the person and the water below. However, the deterrent net system has been delayed for two years as of the recording of this video. Well, that was truly a grotesque tale. Many people drawn to the Golden Gate Bridge to end their lives, sometimes having regrets of even going near the guardrail, only to fall off the bridge due to the slick surface. May these poor souls rest in peace. Thank you for watching the video. Subscribe, like, and share if you'd also like to keep exploring our grotesque curiosity. We will meet again in the darkness of the night.